Hey, it's Francis Lamb, host of The Splendid Table. Join us for a special live taping of our show where I'll be talking to some of Orange County's culinary stars. It's February 4th at South Coast Rep. Tickets at laist.com slash events. Can't wait to see you. LAist Studios. Today on the LA Report, Metrolink service shuts down today to give the commuter rail line crews a chance to do four days of fix-it work. Air quality alert, there is no wood burning allowed throughout much of Southern California. And families gather in Alhambra for a Christmas tradition, Chinese food. We don't spend as much like time with each other as much as we would like, so it just gives us an opportunity to like hang out and talk and like bond over food. Good morning. It's Tuesday, December 26th. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the L.A. Report from L.A.S. 89.3. Metrolink goes out of service today. It's the start of a four-day closure to allow workers to clean and repair trains and upgrade the regional rail network. Metrolink trains will be resuming regular service on Saturday. In the meantime, crews will be replacing 1930s-era signal relay technology, which will allow Metrolink to run more efficiently into and out of Union Station. You'll have to postpone the burning of the Yule log for another day at least. Indoor and outdoor wood burning continues to be prohibited across most of Southern California today. The South Coast Air Quality Management District has extended the no-burn order until midnight tonight due to high levels of air pollution. The no-burn order applies to the counties of Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino except for the desert areas. More than a dozen facilities to store and distribute renewable energy are being proposed across Los Angeles County. A handful of them has been approved for eventual construction in places such as the Antelope Valley. County Supervisor Catherine Barger oversees much of that area. She wants to regulate where and how renewable energy plants are set up. The North County is really the ideal place, but there needs to be done in a very thoughtful way because I don't want it to impact negatively these communities. Barger says one concern residents have is over the risk of fire. She expects an ordinance will be ready for a vote in 12 to 18 months. Irvine is the latest city in the region to ban gas-powered lawn equipment. Larger businesses working in the city will have to switch to electric leaf blowers and lawn mowers by July. Residents and businesses with fewer than 50 employees will have a bit more time until 2025. Irvine Mayor Farah Khan says that the ban is part of the city's effort to go carbon neutral by 2030. One of the things that was brought up multiple times was the transition from gas-powered leaf blowers and and lawnmowers to electric, and that seemed like a good start for us. Irvine is offering rebates and discounts to help residents and businesses make the switch. There's more information on the ban and the incentives online at laist.com, our website. In 2024, there's one question law enforcement officers in California will no longer be able to ask you. As part of our New Laws series, CAP Radio's Nicole Nixon looks at one policy state lawmakers hope will reduce escalations in racial profiling. Do you know why I pulled you over? Police around the country have probably asked it millions of times. But in 2024, that guesswork is gone. California police are required to state the reason they stopped you before they ask any questions. Scarlett Neath is policy director at the Center for Policing Equity. People who are being stopped by police, particularly Black people, often feel um, in danger or on edge as a result of being stopped. State data shows Black and Latino people are much more likely to be stopped by police in California. Neath says by stating the reason for the stop at the outset, interactions may be less likely to escalate. The only exception to the new law is if an officer reasonably believes there's an imminent threat to life or property. In Sacramento, I'm Nicole Nixon. Coming up, LAist takes you to Alhambra to see how Chinese food figured into some people's Christmas celebrations. On Imperfect Paradise, we take you inside one of LA's most iconic, mysterious, and exclusive clubs. It is... Victorian, dark, moody, patterned wallpapers and old artifacts of magic. How one queer hobbyist magician fell in love with the magic castle. And what happened when that love collided with the realities of an entrenched members-only space. Binge all four episodes of Imperfect Paradise the Castle on Aleas.com or wherever you get podcasts. 
Hi, it's Suzanne Whatley. The L.A. Report is perfect for getting you a quick hit of the day's top stories. For a deeper and broader look at the news, join me for NPR's Morning Edition. Starting at 5 a.m., we get you the day's breaking news stories, local, national, and worldwide, and give you a little joy and delight to start your day right. Morning Edition, weekdays from 5 to 9 on the radio at LAist 89.3 and on the LAist app. Back now to the L.A. Report. Kwanzaa begins today. The annual holiday period celebrates African culture and heritage. The Kwanzaa Guarite Parade is being held in South L.A. today, kicking off the seven-day celebration that began in Los Angeles in 1966. The parade starts at 11 o'clock this morning at Adams and Crenshaw, running to Buckingham Road. A festival is being held afterwards in Lamert Park. It opens at 1230 and it runs until 6 o'clock tonight. For some people, eating Chinese food is as much a Christmas tradition as hanging ornaments on the tree. LAist reporter McKenna Sievertson visited some Chinese restaurants in Alhambra to see how folks were celebrating this year. Parking was easy and the streets were quiet, at least until you came to the crowd in front of the Lunasia Dim Sum House. Most people had reservations, but some groups were determined to get a table. Betsy Krieger and her family were about 40 minutes into an estimated five-hour wait. We're number 30-something, I think. We're down from 91. For Chris Yu, going to a Chinese restaurant has been a family tradition for years. I think it's just because we don't, we don't spend as much like time with each other as much as we would like, so it just gives us an opportunity to like hang out and talk and like bond over food. Lin Vu was headed to a Cantonese cafe down the street. All my kids, they went out with their friends, so probably say, ah, I don't want to cook. I just want to go out and eat. Stir fry, hot pot, and anything with sticky rice seem to be some of the most popular dishes this Christmas. For LAist 89.3, I'm McKenna Siebertson. In the forecast, you can expect mostly sunny skies and temperatures at or a little above normal. Highs this afternoon will be in the mid-60s to around 70 degrees in most areas from the beaches out to the Coachella Valley. Thank you for listening to the LA Report. You can read more news at LAist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the Director of Content Development. LAist's executive editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the LA Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Imagine if you could charge your electric vehicle at the places you already love to eat, shop, and play. Whether you're at the movies, on your weekly grocery trip, or running errands at your local mall, Volta EV charging stations are built around your day-to-day and located in your community and nationwide. All you have to do is check in, plug in, and go about your day. It's EV charging made convenient. Download the Volta app to find your new favorite place to charge.